Hi folks, this is Glenn Guy, your travel photography guru. Welcome to this presentation, which will deal with my upcoming photography tour to China during 2013. So the tour will run in January 2013 for 12 days and 11 nights, beginning Tuesday, January 1st, and ending Saturday, January the 12th. There'll be a maximum of 10 people on the tour. As a way to help research this tour, I undertook the trip myself during January 2011. This is the camera equipment I took with me. Uh, I also took a laptop and two portable drives. So my, my point here is that even though it's a photography tour, you don't necessarily have to load yourself up with too much equipment. Some people may not even want to bring a laptop with them. Um, but you would just need to have sufficient memory cards to uh, get you through uh, what will be a relatively intensive photography experience. I used Lightroom um, to import my images and to do my initial processing and rating selecting of um, better images which you know I then post on my blog and, and other sites. So the tour will commence in Shanghai which is in eastern China. The population of that city uh, theoretically is 12 million although Greater Shanghai is significantly more than that. So this is um, shot from the Bund, uh, looking across the Huangpu River to the Oriental Pearl TV Tower on the left of the screen. So it's a very futuristic um, part of town, and the Bund itself where I'm shooting from is quite the opposite. That's really the um, colonial uh, side of Shanghai, and it's very, very beautiful. So it's interesting to um, be able to photograph both areas basically without moving too much. From where that photograph was made, if you were to turn around 180 degrees and walk in the opposite direction, you'd basically be on the famous Nanjing Road, which is a, a very modern shopping area. I'll be planning a night shoot uh, along Nanjing Road. It'll be a lot of fun. And also a great dining experience at the Peace Hotel, which is, you know, historically um, a very, very interesting part of uh, Shanghai situated on the corner of the Bund and Nanjing Road so our location is ideal. There's a jazz bar in the Peace Hotel and members of that band uh, have been playing there for decades so they've pretty much seen it all. So here's some shots on the Bund. And Nanjing Road. This is some outdoor uh, dancing, which is uh, very popular and folks are generally very happy to be photographed. Now this is um, the last part of Nanjing Road looking back towards the Bund and you can see the Oriental Pearl TV Tower in the background. Uh, Shanghai, um, particularly this area of the town, is you know very modern. Just uh, off to one side is the entrance to the jazz club. Now we'll be having a special dinner in the Peace Hotel and uh, here's a view that we may be able to access um, looking back across the Huangpu River. Some of the guys in the, um, the jazz band. After Shanghai we head to uh, Huangshan. Uh, Huang means yellow and Shan uh, means mountain. It's in eastern China. It's a short flight, not much more than an hour from uh, Shanghai itself, and it's renowned for its natural beauty. It's absolutely sublime. So wonderful opportunities for landscape and nature photography in both colour and black and white. Now, it's the middle of winter, and I'm timing this tour in January um, for a couple reasons. One of them is that, well, there are literally millions of tourists that visit this mountain but there's very few that visit it during the winter time. I was there for three nights and I doubt that I saw more than 50 people on the mountain during that time. On the, the days that I was there it was a blanket of white cloud which basically produced a fabulous soft box, a very soft quality of light enabling me to get a great deal of detail um, without having to resort to multiple exposures and HDR or any of that hocus pocus. <laughs> So it was great, and, and any colour uh, in the landscape, even relatively desaturated colour like this traditional yellow bridge, really just jumps out under those conditions. Now hopefully we'll get a variety of weather conditions. It'd be nice to have some blue sky, 
But even if it's um, very, very overcast, you'll find that it's just gorgeous under those conditions. Here's pretty much a design shot, which I've talked about um, uh, on my blog um, from time to time, made on the mountain. So you can see, you know, it has very much a black and white quality. Now, in some cases, there was a little bit of colour in the image, um, which I removed. But in most cases, this is pretty much uh, what came out of the camera. Again, another design shot, sort of that um, Asian minimalistic aesthetic that um, a lot of us would be aware of. I found that um, I was photographing the mountain in several ways. One was literally the journey that I was undertaking. Um, Yellow Mountain is actually um, numerous mountains linked together, if you like, and uh, you ascend to the top and then basically cross from one to the other. And it's uh, stone, so some areas are flat walking and others are up and down. And, in, you know, there's a lot of steps. Now, you can um, climb the mountain up a very steep path and climb down again. But because we'll be bringing some um, luggage with us for a few days and, you know, our camera gear, that's quite a bit to carry. So I, I, um, I decided to take the cable car and that's what um, we'll be doing uh, on the tour. It's probably about a 10 or 15 minute trip up. It's a European made cable car, great quality, great views. And, and that will uh, enable us to spend really to maximize our time on the mountain itself and the same coming down. Now, it probably looks pretty steep, but I'm photographing here with a wide angle lens, uh, you know, to really accentuate um, the line in the picture. So the, you know, I don't want to underestimate it, but really, if you have average fitness, because I don't even have that, <laughs> if you have average fitness, you'll be fine. So you see again, uh, pretty much a colourless image. Now there's a little bit of blue in the background and that would be because there were some darker clouds just out of frame which cast a bluish light. And then you see the yellow in the foreground and um, the spots of red. So any colour really does stand out. And that's literally um, 30 seconds away from the front door of one of the hotels on the mountain. Um, so as well as the grand vistas, there are plenty of really delicate nature images to be made. That one there, a very subtle uh, mist in the um, Huangshan pines. These trees are very famous in China, and uh, one of them is said to be, um, oh, it's at least 1,500 years old, which, which we pass on the trail. It's cloudy probably two-thirds of the, the year and um, you're actually above the clouds. Um, so that really adds a very interesting perspective. And uh, sunrise and sunset, when the clouds are illuminated, can be quite amazing. And you get this misty vapour basically um, passing through um, on a regular basis and some of the uh, very scenic locations can be completely obliterated but if you hang on um, often they'll clear and you know a new world will be revealed it's it's quite amazing and because it's a photography tour we have time to wait that's really key early morning image incredible it's a little reminiscent of the two towers i think if anyone's familiar with um, the lord of the rings film the beginning of the, the second film in the trilogy. Here's an area that we'll uh, visit, um, which is a lovely walk. We only need an hour or so in this location, but it's um, uh, a very pretty walk. A series of these um, jade-coloured pools, m mini, mini waterfalls. It's quite lovely. And there's a little bamboo forest, which when I was there was covered in snow, which was gorgeous. And here's one of those um, classic villages that I mentioned. Really um, an image, I think, that talks about tranquility, harmony, balance, some of the more positive aspects of um, Chinese culture.
after the um, four days, in fact, in the Huangshong area, we'll be travelling to Xi'an, which is the um, ancient capital, um, and that's where we'll get to photograph the Terracotta Warriors, and also the Great Mosque and Muslim Quarter. And um, we'll throw an interesting sunrise uh, location in there uh, to boot. Gee, I've had four trips to China, and I'm yet to uh, to go to Xi'an, um, but everyone seems to want to go there. So um, I'll be putting um, a quick stop in as part of this tour. We'll be there for um, one and a half to two days. And then we fly on to Harbin, which is really just a scream. It's a fantastic place. Um, ice and snow is what it's famous for. It's up in the far northeast of China, quite close to the Russian and North Korean borders. Um, there's lots of um, Russian history. It doesn't look at all like any Chinese um, town or city um, that we would normally associate with that country. It's, it's got very Russian um, aspects to the architecture. So we'll be undertaking a photo walk around town. Um, and then we'll be checking out um, some really fantastic locations called Snow World and Ice World. Despite its uh, location and its harsh environment, there's almost 10 million people there, which is just extraordinary. Now, this is um, a very large river in town, which uh, is frozen for a considerable uh, period each year, and we can actually go out on the river and make photographs. So if the weather's uh, kind to us, we'll um, have a photo walk which will include uh, the river. And uh, around town, I just stumbled on this place. We're out of um, the ice. They were carving little sculptures. And, you know, it was sunny at that stage, so I was able to um, explore light passing through the ice. Shot of a local girl on a photo walk. So again, if the weather's with us, um, we'll enjoy this photo walk. Although I did find the streets very slippery, I must say. Snow World is a blast. Um, it's a huge um, park on the outskirts of town and we'll notice these architectural wonders carved in snow everywhere. It's just glorious. And uh, There are different themes every year but there's often a lot of uh, European influence in the architecture. Uh, sometimes important thinkers, philosophers, poets are depicted. So one of the workers there cleaning up. So as well as those major architectural elements, there's lots of other interesting things to find if you're pre prepared to walk around a little bit. And for the kids, all the kids at heart, you know, there's plenty of things to do there. But for me, it was, it was the statues and uh, the landscape itself. I just thought it was gorgeous. Uh, at the end of the day, um, the sun's getting low in the sky and, you know, there's the, the, the warmth in the background with the coolness in the foreground. So you see I'm moving from colour to black and white as um, befits the image in question. Uh, and here's a, a very European scene, I suppose, uh, quite a major bridge over the river. And then on to Ice World, which, you know, I just thought was a scream. Now, we'll be um, visiting Ice World for an evening shoot. And it is huge. So, I don't know if you can see in the foreground, there's a couple people posing there. Uh, these structures are very safe. Uh, some of them you can actually walk through. They're illuminated in varying colours. So, for instance, the greens and yellows in the foreground may, after 30 seconds, change to a... Uh, or I don't know, a hot pink, you know. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun, it really is. And I think, you know, two hours of that location would give lots and lots of opportunities for photos. So that's a pretty much life-size lighthouse made from ice just extraordinary
to Harbin, we go to Beijing, the um, capital of China, and we'll visit the Forbidden City, which is the home of the emperor and the seat of power, traditionally. Uh, and of course, it's fronted by Tiananmen Square. Great place to photograph architecture in colour and black and white. Uh, here's um, one of the girls on the uh, entrance gates, you know, checking my ticket. Uh, a tourist, a local tourist. So, you know, even though it's really about architecture, this location, I never miss an opportunity to look for a, a portrait. It's good to look for images that are a little different, fleeting moments, um, iconic images, something that really stands out from the pack. So this shot uh, was made really just above the front entrance to the city. So you can walk up these steps and get a view down on Tiananmen Square. And this is where traditionally Mao Zedong or um, you know um, other leaders would um, get up on the balcony and they'd have um, a parade once a year where you know the military would walk past and you know it was all about uh, power and prestige and who's in control we well, can basically get up and stand right there um, the trouble was it was such a bright day that I was looking directly into the Sun really I just couldn't make a picture uh, so I descended back down the steps and uh, saw the flag blowing in the wind and really just waited until um, I had some interesting silhouettes and uh, made that shot the Temple of Heaven, for me, is a more interesting place than the Forbidden City. It's a little bit more delicate, uh, just as grand, but I've, um, it's, it's in a more natural environment. So there's trees and grass, which you don't really see much of in uh, the Forbidden City. So we'll be visiting both locations. Colour red again. Similar doors at both um, locations, and these, you know, these symbols are quite um, interesting design elements. And I think it's good to mix it up. You know, you do the grand, expansive view, and then you come in for the more design-orientated images, where composition is um, really, really important. So yes, it's it's an entrance, and it probably talks about pomp and power. But um, as a compositional or design image, you know, it's really about shapes and lines and colour um, and leading the eye through the frame. A little bit more abstract, that image. And, you know, there were these great guys and girls out there doing some sort of a dance Tai Chi uh, thing and uh, very happy to be enjoying the sunshine but it was winter I think the key is that all of these locations there's so many opportunities for photography even though it's cold um, it's incredible now I'm from Australia so uh, um, if you're from um, Europe or from North America, um, you'd be far more used to the cold than me. Uh, so I doubt that you'd have any problem at all. Um, I just made sure I had plenty of warm clothes and um, I was fine. I just kept moving. So it's an organized tour, but wherever we go, be ready for a surprise because <laughs> um, I always try to throw in some um, some interesting uh, events um, that are kind of not on the, uh, the the plan, if you like, not part of the plan. Um, and I think it's important that we embrace the weather. In fact, um, with changes in weather comes changes in light. And, you know, the really great photographers, particularly landscape and architecture, understand that. And they often make their best images as the weather is actually changing. From my point of view, I'm always reminding myself of just how lucky I am to be able to afford to go to these places uh, for an extended period of time and make images. And uh, despite the fact that I might be feeling cold on occasions, I just move. I just walk 
And I find that by doing that, my brain kicks in and I start to see things. And when I've got the camera in my hand, I'm a very different person and I'm, I'm much more motivated and I'm really um, looking at the world in a different way. So the great news is that, you know, as keen photographers, you'll be on this tour with like-minded people. We're all photographers and we're all really after that experience of photography and we're also looking for a great outcome to make great images that we'll uh, be able to share with a wider audience on our return. <laughs> uh, lunch or dinner can wait. Now you're going to be looked after, there's no doubt about that. The food and accommodation is going to be as good as I can possibly get. Um, but, you know, photography is about light and about seizing the moment. So um, we will sometimes just delay our meal. Um, because the photography opportunities are better. This is not your traditional tour where there's 50 people on a bus and it's all based around uh, meal time. And you know what it's like, you get to a wonderful location and you've got 10 minutes and you've got to get back on the bus. I mean, I just wouldn't, I just wouldn't do that to people. Um, this is all about photography. So we're actually going to as few places as possible on any given day but they'll be the best places that I've found from my own travels um, for photography and we'll be spending as much time at each location as we can and wherever possible we'll be getting there for the right time of day at the right time of day to make great shots. So the compromise is sometimes we'll have to wait a little bit longer for our meal or we might have to eat a bit earlier. I'm sure you can understand that. Another portrait, so it's it, it's candid in that it wasn't organised. I simply asked permission, made the shot, and was on my way within, you know, a minute. And if you're not used to working that way, I'll be certainly um, happy and able to help you uh, achieve images like this quickly. Nothing like a photo walk, you see. Um, little bit of extra time, nice weather, I'm not hungry, let's see what I can find on my way from, this was on my way from the Forbidden City, um, basically towards a restaurant. Why not take an hour longer and just explore? So that's this series of images you're looking at now. So the inclusions, accommodation, which uh, wherever possible will be five star. On Huang Shan, there'll be one or two four stars as well, but on Huang Shan for the three nights we're there, the sort of three to three and a half star, um, but they're fine, the hotels. I mean, there's no choice. That's the, uh, the best there is. I, I did quite a bit of research and I stayed in the best hotels I could and I found I was looked after very, very well, but um, we have no choice. Um, and anyway, we're out. It's really just a sleep in. Uh, we're out during the day making pictures. Um, but the great thing is that, you know, you walk out the door and you're there in the landscape. So, I, you know, I have no issue with that at all. Um, all meals will be provided and there will also be three special dinners provided as part of the tour. One in um, Shanghai, one in Beijing and one in Xi'an. All internal flights and transport will be looked after as well, and uh, all entrance fees. You'd need to look after drinks and snacks yourself, um, and you may want to do a little bit of shopping. Uh, but, you know, I, I think if you had $500, um, that would, I mean, I couldn't imagine spending more than that personally um, outside doing a lot of shopping be uh, quite a bit of photography theory uh, and of course lots of practical sessions uh, and they'll relate to each location. Now the thing is it's a we're packing a lot into this tour. Experienced photography teacher it can be difficult to deliver this sort of information on location you know the the facilities in the hotel may not be right there may be issues with the projector and that sort of thing. So a lot of the information will be provided to you before the tour in a variety of uh, ways. On location, will really uh, likely be the night before where it's just a quick 10 or 15 minute uh, review of how, how we went today and then maybe a 10 minute introduction to where we'll be going tomorrow, the sort of things to expect. And 
all that is really just backing up uh, a load of information that I'll be giving to you prior to the tour commencing. We will be doing uh, some image processing uh, for folks who are interested. Um, and again, I'll be providing a lot of that information to you prior to the commencement of the tour. Because it's very hard to learn things on location. You want to have the information already and then you know, um, I'll have, um, we'll just grab a, a space in the hotel where we can all, for instance, a dining room uh, off hours or something like that, where we can set up our computers and work on images. And that way, if someone's got a specific um, question, I'm there to help. Exclusions. Um, of course, your international fares to and from China, uh, drinks and snacks, as I mentioned. And for anyone who is deciding to arrive uh, a few days early or possibly extend their, their time in China after the tour concludes, of course, those costs would be yours as well. Oh, excuse me, that's January 2013, the tour, 12 days and 11 nights. Tuesday, January the 1st with a evening welcome meal and basically a chance for everyone to meet. And we'll be concluding after breakfast on Saturday, January the 12th. And I've structured it in this way so that for those folks who have um, a long way to go to get home, if you are deciding to go back to work on the Monday, you've got plenty of time to um, get your flight, get home and maybe have a bit of a rest beforehand. It may be that other folk are maybe not taking their flight until uh, later in that evening. Um, if I'm around and available, um, there's no reason why we couldn't organise a little ad hoc um, photo walk, for instance, or during the Saturday afternoon. But all of these things will um, will we'll, we'll stay in touch before the tour begins and uh, as we start to get details on flights, we'll be able to work all of that out. Again, a maximum of 10 people because we won't be in big buses, we'll be in um, small buses or, or maybe spread over a couple cars on some occasions, but they'll be um, good quality, comfortable, and uh, we'll have plenty of space for cameras and tripods. So I'll be making sure that um, whether it's cars or buses, that there'll be plenty of space um, and it'll be comfortable. The costs um, uh, based on Twinshare, though a single supplements uh, uh, may also be available if you're interested. The price is $7,495. However, I'm offering a $500 discount for folks who are able to book by the end of business on Wednesday the 29th of February 2012. So you've got a little bit of time to uh, have a look and maybe um, ask any questions significant discount and that'll bring the um, the price down to six thousand nine hundred and ninety five now uh, once um, you've contacted me and expressed um, interest and maybe I've cl cleared up any questions you may have um, then I'd put you in contact with my travel agent here in um, Melbourne Australia and uh, she would be able to take a um, payment from you so the tour is going to be conducted in winter and that's going to provide us with uh, softer light and that will be a great benefit for our photography. But of course winter weather can be fickle. Plans and arrangements may have to be adapted in line with local conditions. I'm sure you can appreciate this. Now I'll always have a plan B. Um, there's lots of other things we can do if we do strike bad weather. Again I'm an experienced tutor so for instance if we're up in the mountains and we get snowed in for a day and we can't leave the hotel unlikely but if it was to happen I have plenty of resources with me to um to keep you occupied and entertained of course um prices and conditions are subject to change but by getting in early you help lock us in and um that will minimize the need for any changes uh, in price but of course by booking early you'll be able to secure that special $500 early bird discount so, um, I'd look forward to receiving your emails. It's glenn, G-L-E-N-N, at travelphotographyguru.com. I'll then put you in contact with my local Australian travel agent for more specific information on booking and uh, payments. Please don't forget the early bird discount. It ends uh, close of business 29th of February 2012. 
You can find me on my blog, which I tend to update usually two out of every three days, travelphotographyguru.com. You can find me on Facebook, also on Twitter. The Twitter handle is Travel Photo Guru. And I really hope that I can meet some of you folks on this tour to China. It's going to be amazing. It's a magnificent country. The landscape opportunities are wonderful. There's so many people that portrait photography is not too difficult. Public people, you know, they're, they're not shy in public spaces generally. So um, they're quite easy to approach. And because it's such a different culture to what many of us uh, have been brought up in, you'll find that we are at least as exotic to them as they are to us. And I think that's a really important point. It means that we don't have to be shy because they're actually interested in us and that makes it easier for us to make photographs. Thanks so much for your attention and participation and I hope to talk with you all in the future. Bye for now.